coming up on South Coast Spotlight, visit a local book signing featuring two longtime TV Santa Barbara member producers, see what popped up in front of the Arlington Theater, and find out important steps you should take before a health crisis hits. All that and more on this episode of South Coast Spotlight. Welcome to South Coast Spotlight, where we take you around the South Coast to share what brings our community to life. I'm Dominique Samario. Recently, two TV Santa Barbara members were the focus of attention at a Granada Books event. William and Lori Hall Smithers were on hand to share their many accomplishments and also discuss misunderstandings about the method acting and directing techniques. In the 19th century, most actors relied on their abilities to alter their voices and facial expressions to portray their roles. This led to the wide popularity of melodramas. Towards the turn of the century, a visionary from Russia named Konstantin Stanislavsky wanted to bring more realism to acting. He developed the method, an acting technique that trains actors to connect emotionally with their characters. Lee Strasberg furthered the method in the actor's studio in New York a wide array of movie stars employ this technique, including Anne Hathaway, Leonardo DiCaprio, Jack Nicholson, and Kate Winslet. Strasberg asked only one of his students to take over his course, Understanding the Method. That student was Lori Hall Smithers. Local residents, renowned actors, and teachers, Lori Hall and Bill Smithers, discussed the method at a talk at Granada Books. The method is acting training where an actor have thoughts and feelings that are real based on imaginary circumstances. Dr. Hall taught for Strasbourg for 12 years. She has coached acting and directing internationally. She has even offered advice to Princess Grace of Monaco. I believe in it and I've seen it really, really work. The only life history nesting there Often in an actor's subconscious, it's his or her own. The actor is the clay from which a character is molded. It develops a repertoire that no other way can of getting the emotion wanted just, you know, by knowing the key to turn. An actor has real thoughts and real feelings. I no, don't know anything that looks more phony than on TV seeing someone indicating pain. In our technique, they really feel the pain. But a wide range of past experiences is not necessary to be a successful method actor. If I had to act a role where I murdered someone, what do I do? I can't relive murdering someone. I've never murdered anyone. Start with a basis of truth. It can be something as simple as a mosquito buzzing around and you hit it and then you add to it with your imagination. In extreme cases, the technique is more controversial, as some method actors will actually put themselves through harmful experiences to better relate to their roles. Other actors will stay in character throughout the entire production period, even while off camera. Regardless, method acting has increased in popularity, from being used from Marlon Brando to Sean Penn. Quoting Lee Strasberg, Method acting is just what fine actors have been doing for over 2,000 years, using themselves. And thanks to contributions from Bill and Lori Hall Smithers, actors can continue to effectively learn and understand the method. Take a look at this year's Pop-Up Film Festival, where they have us rethinking about women's rights and unlawful prosecution. See what all the controversy was about up next. I'm here to give a voice to filmmakers that normally would not have a voice. We're here showing seven films about social injustice. These are films primarily by Santa Barbara filmmakers to supply entertainment and 
moral value to our community. So movies by the people for the people. This is going to be a good opportunity to showcase different opinions and different experiences from women from all different backgrounds, 18 women's stories, and it'll give the audience a chance to see their own experiences with not having children, whether they chose to have children or they evolved to not have children. And I'm hoping that the audience will be able to come away with a new look at women who haven't had children. I'm from Israel and I have bought two films here. Uh, one called uh, Let There Be Light. Uh, it's about uh, living the Orthodox, Jewish Orthodox uh, uh, way of living and being secular and the, way, the thing that you're going through uh, in the process, the family. We um, took uh, mostly films that we didn't think would be shown in the larger festivals because of their issues, because they're about um, very volatile social subjects at the moment. It's a little intimidating sometimes and I have to kind of assert myself, but I'm proud to actually be a woman in this field and uh, I hope to just continue to grow. We're showing my movie, which is Blood Ganja, which is about the raids and arrests that took place in 2010 here in Santa Barbara. There's actual studies that prove that marijuana, THC, CBD, all the cannabinoids within marijuana are effective. They're effective for many different ailments, whether it's ADHD, PTSD, or actual physical ailments you have on your body, cancer, chemotherapy, to help with nausea. It's a very localized movie, primarily about the clinic Horty Farm. The owner and his pregnant wife were unjustly arrested and charged with 46 felonies. We're here today um, to have a celebration of female empowerment through film. So we will be watching Femme and A Woman with a View with a large contingent of our community. We're very excited to be here and um, it's very important uh, for the community to be aware of everything that the Jewish Federation does and all the programs that we have for the community at large. Women are feeling more and more that they can uh, challenge themselves, they can push themselves, they can really reach uh, to heights that they never even conceived, you know, in the past. Uh, the group that I work with are Holocaust, well, local Holocaust survivors who um, have amazing stories, whose stories need to be told to community members and school children, and we want to raise awareness and let people know that anyone can come in and visit our Portraits of Survival exhibit. The idea behind this is, is that if these local people can create these beautiful pieces of art that have moral value, then we at least, the neighbors of these people, the community, need to share in it and need to stand up and be counted. We're not bound by any city, state, country, or genre. We pop up where we feel we are needed. Now is when things are happening. Movies by the people for the people. Up next, join us for a very special event as we celebrate the grand opening of a brand new facility for a nationally recognized nonprofit located right in the heart of our very own downtown Santa Barbara. So we're helping individuals really engage in their community and bring their full selves. So we're helping a population that often is disenfranchised or forgotten to really be vibrant, vital parts of the communities, to be good neighbors and to be an active citizen, to be a good employee and to contribute and to engage. What's really impactful is that those skills, those assets are being brought to the broader community and it's really, it's, it's, it's an asset for the entire community to have those voices participating. We're basically a skills training organization working with people who have never had the opportunity for a lot of community experience. Pathpoint's about to enter its 50th year of helping people with pretty significant disabilities or economic disadvantages to enter the mainstream of our community life. It's a beautiful facility right here in downtown Santa Barbara. It's easily accessible for people who need to come here and the equipment here is phenomenal. It's, it's high tech and low tech. You got artwork happening, you have being able to, through computer software, to have be able have people communicate with their family members. Chat with her mom, chat with her sister, FaceTime. I got to see 
how the mission of Pathpoint was fulfilled with these individuals and uh, the participants who worked in the environment, in the work environment with others, and how they, they grew and developed and, uh, and really, really loved their jobs. Their jobs are so important to them. We also help them out with their art projects. They're here for their art goals. We help them out with dancing, like Zumba, salsa, hip hop. Having folks with disabilities in the environment raises morale. It brings together a sense of team and it really it enhances the bottom line. The individuals would comment on, I'm not dependent upon my family, I'm independent now. I want to succeed. It's connecting them to the community through employment opportunities, but also community opportunities and being really reaching their best potential and really focusing on their abilities. Having people who are productive citizens reduce their reliance on government funded services or direct support are part of a diverse workforce and a diverse community in which everyone benefits. One, two, three. We understand that death is a painful experience, but thanks to local nonprofit the Alliance for Living and Dying Well, residents can have the tools to make this transition as smooth as possible for their loved ones. The Alliance is a wonderful organization. It's a collaboration of leaders and agencies in the community who are very devoted to making sure we have the highest quality of end-of-life care that we can in our community. And we have a variety of approaches and ways to reach people in terms of lifting up our awareness actually about our mortality with the idea that the more aware we are that we don't live forever, we might live more fully and meaningfully and compassionately. The document that we're promoting is called the Five Wishes, and it's one of many forms of a healthcare directive. Any healthcare directive that's legal, we will definitely honor and will encourage and support you in filling out. We are utilizing the Five Wishes because Cottage Hospital promotes that and there's consistency in the community. And it's also known as the Advanced Healthcare Directive with a Heart because it really, um, is a great catalyst for conversation and for things that we might not think about. We are very blessed. We are not aware of any other organization like this. We have been able to touch over 5,000 lives of people who are now in the process, if not having completed, advanced care directives. But the most important part of that is not the piece of paper. It's that they've given it thought. They know what their values are. They know what quality of life means to them, especially as it comes towards the end of their life. And they've had those really, really important conversations with their loved ones, their physicians, and the people that matter to them. Healthcare directive education is essential for the entire community. To ensure this, the Alliance for Living and Dying Well offers bilingual staff. La vida no es asegurada y de que en algún momento puede surgir algo inesperado, pero por medio de este documento podemos todavía mantener el control acerca de la atención médica que vamos a recibir. Today is a day to actually get the word out about the importance of doing and completing a health care uh, directive. And today we are um, seeing a steady flow of people come into this building and complete those directives. It's not always an easy task to do. What I would like to do is walk into that room and start the process myself. This past fall, TV Santa Barbara opened its doors for its grand opening at our new location at 329 South Salinas Street. While everyone was here to celebrate, we took some people inside the studio so they could share their stories on what makes TVSB so special to them. I think TVSB is just a great place. All the programming I've seen is, is just great. TVSB yeah. is just wonderful. What uh, are, is possible with uh, community media, what is not being covered by the mainstream commercial media, and there are all these wonderful stories out there that need to be told, and this is the perfect way, really, to make many of these stories uh, a reality. One of the programs that we run is called Santa Barbara Teen News Network, and that's why we're here today at TVSB, and we're excited to be here because they do a fabulous job helping us produce a fabulous show. 
Uh, my husband, Stan Roden, and I are going to be teaching a class on how to make a documentary film. Mm -hmm. And we've teamed up with TVSB mm -hmm. to do our production. They needed a show about money mm -hmm. on TV, financial show. And I said, well, you found the right guy. Right. So we talked and eventually came up with a show called Make Your Money. I encourage people to learn how to use a video camera and edit video. It's not hard and it's so much fun and you've created something special. Well, that does it for this episode of South Coast Spotlight, but be sure to continue to join us for a look at the arts, culture, and community that make up the South Coast. If you have an idea for a segment, email us at info at tvsb.tv. We look forward to seeing you next time, but until then, get out and enjoy your South Coast.